Hi, and welcome to another of my mad magnet experiments. This will be my craziest so far. I'm sure you haven't seen this before. I'll attempt to combine two 6x2 inches neodymium magnets. Magnets with a rated pull force of 1200 kilograms each. Is it even possible, or will I fail and end up with an expensive pile of magnet crumbles? Neodymium magnets are not toys. Do not handle magnets of the shown size unless you know and accept all the risks involved. So why would I even attempt this? It mostly started as a standing joke in the comments on my videos where I combine already large neomagnets. I never took it seriously and just dismiss it with the I've only bought one of them, send me a second one and I'll consider it. Not. The years went on and the thought starting haunting me. Is it even possible? Can I do it? For some of my other experiments, like testing the magnetic reactions of elements, it would be useful to have a magnet with a massive far-reaching magnetic field. The dream of a 6x4 inches neomagnet was born. Then, in autumn 2017, magnetportal.de donated two monstrous magnets to my channel. One of them a 6x2 inches. Since then, I've been planning how to combine the two magnets in a controlled way. Neodymium magnets are brittle, like a ceramic dinner plate and with a ton of pull force. Literally, this project is more difficult and dangerous than you might think. It takes some preparation to avoid chipping or even shattering the magnets. I have used wedges made of hardwood in the past, but they are not solid enough for larger magnets. I hope these filling wedges made of plastic are the solution. They are designed to be solid and not pop out when the weight of a tree is pushing down on them. But my worry is not them falling out. Getting them stuck in the pinch between the magnets is the problem. So off with the spikes. So far, it's been a one-man project to combine my magnets. Not this time. I know my limits and have called in a secret helper. He has absolutely no experiences in handling powerful magnets, but will more than double our forces in men versus magnets. After some practice, it is time for the real deal. The first magnet is placed with its south pole facing upwards. And the heavy wedge is placed over the magnet. I double checked the polarity and noticed a low gauss reading above the wedge. 25 centimeters or 10 inches from the magnet. It is only 1% of the gauss reading flat at the surface of the magnet. Nicely low for safety. But I still secure the wedge with some old belts to make sure the bottom magnet isn't suddenly set free. The other magnet is placed in a carrier to make sure we never have our fingers between the magnets. Again with the south pole upwards. After an easy lift on, it is time for the slide. One man pulling the wedge and one man pulling the magnet in opposite direction and trying to keep everything centered over the bottom magnet. First sound is the bottom magnet lifting up from the ground. The magnets are now pinned on each side of the wedge. Pause it. Yep. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> After reaching the plastic part, the forces are now too high for this to work. Even with the secret helper pulling so hard that everything, including me, slides across the carpet, the magnets are not coming any closer. Is this where it ends? Time to come up with a plan B. We decided to turn it into a tug of war. Two Jotlandic Vikings at one end and the two magnets at the other.
By a flaw in my design, it is possible for the wedge to go off center. So, of course it happens. Off camera, we managed to center the wedge a millimeter at the time with a lot of twisting and manhandling. Time for the final pull. However, it didn't last long before something shook us. The noise was loud and unexpected. Still not sure what made this sound. Your guess is as good as mine. After checking nothing bad has happened, we carry on. Yes. <laughs> yes. What a relief. The magnets are not stuck on the wedge and no humans or magnets were harmed. Only damage is a bite to one of the filling wedges. A tiny bit is stuck between the magnets, but it is so flattened that it isn't a problem. The magnets aren't perfectly centered, but with an awkward technique, I managed to align them. <laughs> Once all of the edges are aligned, the magnets will not move anymore. They feel like welded. So here it is, a 6x4 inches neodymium magnet. More compact and safer to store than the two separate magnets and with a solid magnetic field. As you can tell, my table isn't all wood. I'm happy that this experiment ended so well. I enjoy learning about science by performing experiments for my videos and learning by doing is the most satisfying approach. If you are like me, but don't have the stuff needed or don't want to take the risks often involved, I have a nice tip for you. Brilliant.org is a problem solving website where you can learn to think like a scientist by performing your own thought experiments. Their active hands on learning style will give you a deep understanding of the various terms and concepts involved. One of the principles of learning that I strongly agree with is effective learning allows for failure. In my videos, I not only perform experiments, I am also prepared for them to fail. There was no guarantee that I could have successfully combined these huge magnets. They could have shattered in the end, but then we would learn more about their limitations. If you believe in active learning and embracing failure, I highly recommend you go to brilliant.org slash 75 and sign up for free. The first 275 using the link will even get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Then you can go crazy with the experiments without any warnings from me. And speaking of experiments, in my next video I'll test this new magnet. How well does it perform in the tests I used in my previous video? Experiments like bending a saw from a distance, max pull force on a paperclip and inversing a compass. Can you guess from how far away it will invert a compass? Let me know in the comments and in the next video I'll give a shout out to the one with the closest guess. Thank you for watching. Thanks to Magnet Portal for the magnet and Brilliant.org for sponsoring the video. And a special thanks to my helper. What a collaboration this has been. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell or you may miss the next video. Bye for now.